And joining me now is Evelyn Farkas. She's the former U.S. Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Russia, Ukraine, and Eurasia. It's so great to see you, Evelyn. Thank you for joining us. Likewise, Zulina. Thanks for having me. So I want to go through some of the things uh, that President Putin said in that interview with Kier. Some of the other things, aside from the clip that we've already showed, uh, he seemed to compare the insurrection with Russian dissidents. Let's take a listen. I'll get your reaction on the other side. And they came to the Congress with political demands. Isn't that persecution for political opinions? Some have been accused of plotting to take over government power. Some are accused of robbery. They didn't go there to rob. The people, the individuals whom you mentioned, yes, they were convicted for violating their status of individuals who had been previously convicted and given suspended sentences. Twice an individual was given suspended sentences. Essentially, it was a warning not to violate the Russian laws. And he completely ignored the requirements of the law. The court went on and turned the conviction into real jail time. Thousands and thousands of people ignore requirements of the law, and they have nothing to do with political activities in Russia every year, and they go to jail. If somebody is actually using political activities as a shield to deal with their own issues, including to achieve their commercial goals, then it's something that they have to be held responsible for. What did you make of that response? Well, I mean, I have a real problem with this. This is typical for the Kremlin, for Vladimir Putin. You know, he creates these false equivalences. First of all, the Americans who are being held, I would say, hostage in Russia today, they ha there's no there's no evidence that they committed any crimes. Right. So they're in jail under trumped up charges. In the case of Paul Whelan, they they put they probably planted a thumb drive on him and accused him of espionage. Um, I'm less familiar with the case of the other former Marine, the young man. Um, but he also it appears they looks like they accused him of being of, of bullying or harassing a police officer. I mean, these they have not had due process. And it's clear that they're being held for political purposes. There's a third guy, another American, that's a little bit more of a business um, situation. Um, he's been a longtime Russia guy, work, work, American working in Russia. But the bottom line is, it's nothing like the insurrectionists. I mean, the insurrectionists went and broke mm -hmm. American law. They broke into the Capitol. They broke property in the Capitol. They, they harmed, they, they they conducted bodily harm. They assaulted police officers. Um, they wanted to actually murder and 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 harm members of Congress. So th there is no equivalence here. But but the Russians like to create these false equivalences to divert us from their actual behavior. There was a lot of use of false equivalencies uh, in this interview with Vladimir Putin. Putin also took issue when he was asked about his fear of opposition and the safety of jail dissident Alexei Navalny. Let's take a look. Mr. President, why are you so threatened by opposition? Who says that I feel threatened by opposition or we're threatened by opposition? Who told you? Who, who told you that? <laughs> you are presenting it as dissent and intolerance towards dissent in Russia. We view it completely differently. You have mentioned the law on foreign agents, but that's not something that we invented. That law was adopted back in the 1930s in the United States. Would you in like America, to keep answering? we call what you're doing now whataboutism. What about this? What about that? It's a way of not answering the question, will you commit that you will personally ensure that Alexei Navalny will leave prison alive? Look, such decisions in this country are not made by the president. They're made by the court. I proceed from the premise that the person that you have mentioned, the same kind of measures will apply, not in any way worse than to anybody else who happens to be in prison. His name is Alexei Navalny. People will note that you weren't prepared care. to say that care. he would leave prison alive. Look, look, please listen to me carefully. His name can be anything. He's one of the individuals who are in prison. For me, he's one of the citizens of the Russian Federation who has been found guilty by a Russian court of law and is in prison. 
concerned are you based on Putin's answers there about Navalny's health and safety? And how do you expect President Biden to approach that issue when the two meet Wednesday? I'm so glad you asked that question, Zerlina, because actually I've been watching and participating in interviews, you know, all day, and people haven't asked that question. Um, I, because I think actually part of the reason why President Biden is holding this summit may have to do with keeping Alexei Navalny alive. If you recall, the decision, the invitation to meet with um, President Putin was extended by the U.S. side around the time that Navalny's um, health was in great danger and he needed to be transferred to the hospital. It was also the time, of course, that Russian forces had been massing on the Ukrainian border and also in the Black Sea, um, which, by the way, they're, they're still there. <laughs> and Navalny's still in prison. Mm -hmm. um, although we did get to go to the hospital. But I do expect um, that President Biden will raise the issue of Navalny. I think that uh, it is a point of human rights, um, you know, integrity, I guess, um, standing by our values for the United States to speak out for that um, poor man, you know, being basically put in extreme jeopardy. We know the Russian government wants him dead because they tried to poison him with their um, with their weapon of mass destruction, um, something that they've done, of course, numerous other times, not just with the Novichok, but in other assassinations. There's a whole long list of them. Um, so I think that the issue of Navalny is important because we can't allow the Russian government in in broad daylight to murder this man under the eyes of the international community. The international community has to do everything they can to save him. This doesn't mean that he's going to take down the Russian government. Um, what what it demonstrates, though, is how unpopular Putin's party and Putin, to to a little lesser extent, has become. And I think that is something that is important to watch. In Russia, things happen quickly and you don't have much warning. So again, I don't expect his opposition movement, which is also being jailed um, left, right and center. I mean, there's a real clampdown now in Russia. It's beginning to look more like China, you know. Um, so m most people don't think that Navalny's going to be able, N Navalny's party won't be able to run anymore. There's no real way for them to take power unless there's a real popular movement which, you know, is not impossible down the road. This is also fascinating and particularly chilling every time I see the part where he says his name could be anything. It like gives me yeah. goosebumps. Evelyn Farkas, yeah. thank you so much for being here tonight and for helping us break this all down. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.